Right, so welcome back to another episode. This episode is going to be more about the brakes because um, at the minute you can see the brakes on this thing are toast. So these are the 308 mil brakes that come on the car standard. We've obviously got a lot more power up front now. You heard the engine running in the last episode. Sounds uh, awesome. Sounds so much better than the last piston slappy engine. So we need to get rid of these brakes. So these are way too small. We're going to go from 308 mil, which is what we're in at the minute, standard GSI brakes, and we're going to go to 321 mil VXR brakes with some uprated pads and discs. And on the back as well, the brake discs have pretty much just turned into brake rust. Um, we've got new calipers from new brake discs. Now I wanted to take all the uh, subframe off, all the rear beam and everything off, but at the minute, as I said to you, and ignore the fact that it's only got two wheel bolts, you know, it was just to drop it down on the ground. Before I get a comment in the comment section. Um, so the reason I haven't dropped everything off at the minute, the subframe, wishbones, uprated all the bushes and everything. So there's no tracking places open. There's none open near me at the minute. So I won't be able to drive this on the road if I start stripping it all apart. So while these brakes and everything are off, it's a perfect time to check over these hubs. So I'm probably just going to pull them off and check them over, uh, make sure the bearings are all good in them while it's all apart. Um, obviously, this is all getting cleaned up in the future. It's actually driving me mad just being so um, untidy. But what can you do at the minute? So, yeah, I want to uh, replace all these wishbones and bushes and everything and just have it all fresh and new. I've got some new hubs. But I'm going to check these ones over see if they're any good because these are, I think these are original hubs or ATE hubs, which are really good. I'm going to pull them off, check them on off the car. Um, it's all right checking them for play or whatever, but I just want to check them for noise. So you just got to watch your hands sometimes. I'm glad I wear gloves. Um, I don't know if it's where you live, but there's so many false widows around this area. Um, this one's obviously made this one its home. So around here, let's see if I can get it to run out. There he is. Oh, let's just run around the back. I think it's just run around the back there. So there he is, just see it there. I think it's a female that's got eggs. So it's been running around. Bye bye. So obviously this is what she was protecting. There's a nest of false widows there, you can see them. But I'm sorry, like these are not the greatest spiders in the world to be getting bitten by. I've been bitten by them before and they, they hurt. They hurt as much as a bee sting. Um, and people that are allergic to them can actually die from them just like you can with a wasp sting or whatever so yeah lucky i got rid of them <laughs> right so while the hubs and everything were off i thought i'd get some uh, por 15 paint and just uh, give it a lick of paint just to get that rust off i couldn't stand that rust anymore so it looks a little bit fresher until i get to do it properly a little bit uh more tidy now so i'm gonna do the other side as well um can't use them back disc plates now because obviously we're going to the bigger caliper so i'm going to order some fresh ones they sandwich in between the hubs and obviously the whole setup from the other car is going on to this soon anyway. But these hubs are absolutely perfect. Check them all, no play in them, no noise from them at all. Look to the back of them, there's no grease. So them hubs, now we can get these brakes back on. Right, so the brake discs we're using on this car, obviously these 308 mil ones at the minute are absolutely trash. Um, we've got some 321 mil discs right now to go on and you can see the difference in size between them two. So that's a good representation you can see there how much bigger obviously these are 20 321s so they're about 15 mil bigger but they do make the others look small and they've obviously got the padded coating on them so they're not going to rust so we're going to protect them for a while and uh these are going to stop the car a lot better with, with them frodo ds2500 should be a nice setup with the vxr brakes much better than the old crusty ones did 
fresh new calipers um, I might change these to silver in the future I'm not sure yet um, I think the plan is for the front end is I'm going to obviously replace the whole subframe all the wishbones all the bushes track rod end steering rack um, probably even the shocks drop links the whole lot's going to be replaced in one episode um, as I say I can't do it at the minute because of the tracking situation but I think I'm going to get it prepped up so that we can do it all in one episode also going to do the rear beam as well on the car um, anti-roll bar the whole lot underneath so it's going to look really clean um, at the moment this episode is literally just for the brakes get this car driving so I can actually drive it on the road make sure everything's good uh, make sure the engine's good do some testing or whatever so you can see some footage then we're going to clean up the underneath right so now the fronts are done time to move on to these rears so the rears are absolutely nasty they're basically just a solid lump of rust um, you see how long they've been <laughs> sitting there without movement so yeah we're going to replace the whole lot of these back covers I haven't got brand new ones of these at the minute so hopefully these ones are decent um, just a lick of paint to do them and then we're going to change these calipers as well so let's get to getting these stripped down so I've just quickly stripped down the uh, discs and the pads off the car and the calipers and you can hear I just checked over the bearings that one's toast but I've got some um, other hubs some good hubs that I always keep and I'm going to replace that so while I'm taking it off I'm just going to give this quick lick of paint and a wire brush as well and I'll order some brand new ones of them so I can replace everything when I do the rear beam luckily we've got braided brake lines the whole way through on the back here so that's going to give a nice responsive brake pedal so these false widow spiders are absolutely everywhere at the minute you can see they're like egg sacks the whole place like there was loads just run out of that one um, just disturbed the mum again so we're just going to take this uh, hub off now give it a quick clean up okay yeah, that's absolutely knackered well the back brakes are getting replaced and you can see we've gone for the padded discs on the back again as well you can see i've painted up the carriers and also i've changed over the calipers as you know that we've got braided brake lines on there and everything and they look a lot better than these ones that come off here they look like they've been in the sea for a little while you can see how corroded that they are they're, they're all right for refurbing these rear calipers are pretty expensive as it goes they're I don't know, about 140 quid each so like 300 quid a pair um, luckily I've got loads laying about and these ones haven't done that many miles since a rebuild so these are going to go on this obviously for the other side I've already bolted on that one already for this side and uh, just going to get to putting in new retaining clips as well now obviously the padded kit comes with all this lot with locking bolts and everything just using stock pads as well on the rear because you know don't really need anything special on the rear right so we've finally got fresh brakes all the way around now so uh it's been a little while to get to do this because i've stripped everything down painted it all up as you know can't do it half jobs so got four corners of the car's got fresh brakes on it now so we can stop as well as go with this new engine i think a lot of people forget that <laughs> they want to go as fast as they can but obviously they don't uh think about stopping so we've got 320 mil brakes up front now we've got stock brakes on the back but obviously padded uh uprated pads and discs uh, look how crusty that subframe is <laughs> that's got to come off um in the future i might go to the bigger vxr brakes on the rear as well to complement the fronts and uh probably change this servo a master cylinder to the vxr one just for a little bit extra power we've got all this nasty stuff that's come off the car so it's well worth checking all this lot once uh, your car's been sitting for a long period of time you can see how nasty the brakes get so obviously you've got the team d's going on the car which are a lot lighter than the standard wheels we've got ad8r tires as well so we've got a nice grip up front so now we can go out and have a little play with this get some boost into it um, i know it's actually been remapped for the spec that it's on at the minute um, so we're going to go out and play with it with the afr gauge see what we've got see if we can turn the boost up um, see if we can run a little bit more power I might put the three inch exhaust on it don't know yet so i think we're going to take this out for its first drive a little blast have a little bit of fun in it see how it goes not been on the road for four years so now the car's running one thing we haven't got is a afr gauge on this car so we're going to need to fit this aem afr gauge to the car because the car is actually mapped it's got mapped for the ko6 turbo that was on it as you see that ko6 turbo is really inferior to the one that's on it now um, i was out in it the other night just doing a couple of test pulls and everything um, just seeing how the boost was holding and the boost on this turbo setup is holding 21 psi to red nine now i know for a fact that the other turbo would never be able to hold that amount of boost so obviously we've got this boost gauge in here i actually want to get another pod for this one 
if anyone knows where to buy them you can see this is like a vent pod it hasn't just been cut out which i thought it had been it's actually a pod that goes in and i don't ever use these center vents anyway so i'm going to put that in there because i want to keep this cubby hole here but for now i'm going to replace that bang that in there and then get one of them pods for that but basically going to need to fit this afr gauge because the turbo on this car is so efficient compared to the other turbo that it holds the like 21 psi all the way up top and obviously that's going to be increased in the future um, we're probably going to have to in the future change these injectors which are 470 cc and vxr injectors to 630 cc uh, siemens deckers um, because i just don't think we're going to be able to supply enough fuel for the efficiency of this turbo um, but we're going to leave it around 20 21 psi right now so we can put some more fuel in get the afr sweet so it starts to pull nice up top but it's got lovely low down torque at the minute obviously it's a full weight car and these run on a load scaling on these maths rather than you know like on the uh, map sensor on the causes or whatever i don't really need any load so um you actually get more torque with a full weight car than you will with a lightweight car so it actually has more torque on the, the same setup it had more torque than this car did so this is all the wiring that we're going to have to fit into the car so we're going to get that through the bulkhead and wire it in you obviously see that i made some temporary clips up when i fit it to Sephira, but we're going to hard wire this one in now because it's going to stay in that car i've got another afr gauge in the garage as well if i needed that one right so with these looms these uh afr looms i obviously just put them into the same grommet as everything else so you can see we've got a traction control loom going in there boost gauge going in there and it just literally well you can't really see it because it's so bright today but it sits down the back there of the servo uh, very easy to get to that's why i always run and you can just run it along the top of this head so i'm going to tidy this up a little bit as well at the same time tuck it underneath so then what you have to do is you remove this cover from above the throttle pedals and normally <laughs> they've been removed in the past anyway and ain't been popped back but i always pop them back and you can see you can get to the uh loom pretty easy then i just tuck it up behind this duct here and then i normally cable tie it as well then it literally just easily goes around the back of the dash don't have to even take the dash apart to do it um, obviously i'll take this bit apart here so i can get to the loom at the back here to get power for it because obviously we've got to power up this little sub loom here and uh yeah so basically what i'm going to do is for temporary i'm going to put it in in a pod gauge which i don't really like to run here because i like to run these because they're just handy to have you know stick your phone stick your keys in there uh you have got this little cubby hole down here but it's not as convenient so yeah we're gonna put it in there for now and then get another pod gauge bang it up there so we've got this wiring here behind the dash so i've just pulled out this is just for the boost gauge don't know why i needed all this wiring just to set that up you can see there's like locks in there there's different joints and whatever i don't know why it weren't just done properly in the first place but you know no one ever does stuff properly so i just got all the stuff out to do it um just put the aem gauge on there so i just put it on the backing plates as well because it doesn't fit inside the recesses on these because it's got a big front fascia and then that will just sit in there nicely like that luckily that's already been painted i'll probably put a dummy gauge in there just to stop that hole looking stupid so get to getting this wiring down there and then i'll wire in this sub loom as well for the aem gauge get it working so although this wiring's in there for the loom um i just remembered that i haven't actually got uh, a spare bung for the actual pre-cat itself so obviously you can see you've got the lambda one in there but they don't have a secondary one so i'm gonna have to go and rob the pre-cat off of the red gsi because that's got one in it and that's this one's more important at the minute well, so you can see on the gsi we have the pre-cat pipe with two bungs in it you can see one's for the afr gauge and one's for the lambda um, this is also a three inch pre-cat pipe as well you can see it's a three inch one comes off the turbo and then tapers down to two and a half inch so that gives a little bit extra flow um, so we're probably going to swap over this pre-cat pipe onto this one uh, swap the two and a half inch onto this one and uh, then i'll be able to map the car properly um, it's just annoying that i've got to pull it off because this one's all complete so i just pulled this one off the red gear so you can see it's like a three inch setup that goes down and tapers into a two and a half inch so it'd be ideal for what we need got two lambda bungs in there now and then we can get this afr gauge working well that weren't the funnest of jobs but you can see now we've got the pre-cat pipe in there with the two bungs in it now and i've just wired in the afr and i've just tidied up all the wiring run it all down the back all across the back of the bulkhead and down that spot that i told you about and obviously we've got the brand new lambda in there as well so we've got two in there now it was quite difficult to fit that one because it's sort of slightly different design but we've got it fitted in the end you can see it goes from that three inch tapers down to the two and a half inch and I had to mess around with uh, adjusting all this damn pipe again. And we got it in there. 
Right, next job, the exhaust. So the exhaust here is blowing at this section here. You can see it's been sealed up with silicon, no problem. You can use silicon seal exhausts, but it's obviously pulled away from that. The clamp probably ain't been done up tight enough. So that's got to be resealed. So I'm gonna pull that off. See, it's been welded over the rear beam, which is fine to stop it moving. And if you look just around the back there, there's another joint as well. You can see that one's blowing quite badly as well. So I'm gonna take this whole bit off here, this whole section off, reseal it, stop it blowing. We obviously need the uh, exhaust to come out the tailpipe but not halfway down the car. Uh, while I'm under here as well, this tank cover is actually quite solid. It's got a bit of surface rust on it, there's no problem. Can't get hold of these anymore, so you know it's well worth saving them. So when I take this rear beam off, because this beam is coming off, this grass is getting my nerves, getting my focus. So once I get this rear beam off and the anti-roll bar, um, we'll give this all a big clean up. Obviously I've got another two of these anti-roll bars I think and then we've got some black series bushes to go in here as well that's stiffen up the rear end nicely so I've just got the back box off and this section here that goes over the beam um, you can see where it was blowing a little bit there and they used the too much sealant and uh, just got to wire wheel this flange off now so we can get it nice and straight there's a little bit of surface rust and that on it and we have got a new gasket on there obviously you're going to polish up this back box a little bit while it's off it's a no-brainer really it's a good back box so you might as well keep it in good condition right, so i've just went over the back box and that rear pipe as well uh, all the flanges have all been cleaned up and uh, de-rusted so that i can get them nice and smooth get the gasket on there and uh, the most difficult part about this back box was actually getting rid of the um, tar that was on it so obviously i used the uh, intensive tar remover the autoglim stuff gets it rid of it auto sole and some degreaser wipes and got rid of all that lot um now it's almost a mirror finish i'm not going to go too mad on it just give it a quick clean so it stops the corrosion building back up on it exhaust is all now fitted fully again just warmed up the car um, i've put a brand new gasket in there as well you can see and some sealant and also this uh bracket thing here this um clamp i'm really not keen on it's the miltech one that comes with the car i'm going to get a proper clamp for that because it doesn't clamp the exhaust up properly um as i just said uh, I've removed that nasty gasket that was on there. You can see where it was blowing. And I've just warmed the car up, as I said, and there's no blows at all coming from it now. You put your hand over it, I'll put a bit of tissue next to it, and you'll hear it or see it blowing. I see that's a firing one that was at its day. It full of sealant, probably been resealed about 10 times. Also, I took off these rubbers as well because the genuine voxel rubbers are far, far the best, even though these ain't even that old. You can see how much they're splitting and falling apart and all that already and these ones literally last the life of the car so um these are the by far the best um hangers that you can get for the Vauxhalls. don't even bother going to the powerflex ones see how solid they are and they don't um split they're very rarely split anyway the little thing that i did was i pulled the tailpipe forward a little bit further so it actually pulls out past the bumper now because it was way too flush before um it had actually sitting in a bit recessed it was fitted wrong so i'm fitted it you can see it's in the proper position now because it's sitting there nicely central in the hanger so the gauge is all wired in now fully working you can see it's going through its display and um i'll just put this one in for display you know don't even work just so it ain't a hole there so start the car up and we'll be able to see it's just go through calibration warm up of the sensor and then you can see there AFRs, you know, in the 15s, which is absolutely perfect on idle, high 14s, you know, Lambda is 14.7, so it's literally optimal, running like perfect on idle, and just give it a few revs. Right, so something weird I've just noticed is these wipers don't work. I've never had a motor go on these before, so when I tried wiping the wipers, it sort of just doesn't work, or it gets stuck halfway up the window so i'm gonna pull the motor out of this car and stick it in here so just got to remove this cowling get these wipers out and get this motor out of here and lube it up because this one i've actually lubed up and works absolutely perfectly and this one is seized up so i'm going to pull it apart and just see what's gone wrong with it because i always like to find out because i've never had one go on them before they're normally really reliable but I did tell you about it on the red GSI that when it ain't greased up properly and that, it does burn out the motor. No, it's not doing nothing at all. So it's doing like a little bit of movement, you see. That's, well, it ain't even moving now. I don't know what's going on with it. If it's jammed up or what, if it's actually the motor, I'm just going to pull the whole lot off. It's probably seized up somehow. By the feel of it, it's literally so hot, I can't even hold my hand on it. So it's either, you know, it's seized up and the motor's getting really hot or the motor's getting really hot because it's burnt out. Um, this one's actually lovely and cool. 
and it works fine. So this is the one that come off of my obviously Ash track car and I, I done the wire tuck on it when I was taking it apart. I was like, bloody hell, I've probably done that. You can see all the wiring was tucked, everything up. So I do so many cars that I forget about what I've done in the past. So I might, uh, just check this motor over and just see if it's any good if it's just might be the seized up arms while I'm doing this I can just disconnect it unbolt it and see if it's the motor that's burnt out or if it's actually the um, wipers itself okay so I've just plugged in the motor and you can clearly see there the motor is working absolutely fine luckily it hadn't burnt out because it was absolutely roasting hot and obviously it was seized up trying to move the uh, arms so it must be the arms that are seized right so it's actually these arms I cannot move them at all so they're seized up inside here and that's why you've got to keep them properly lubricated no one ever does and uh, they seize up like this obviously it's been sitting for a long time and um, with my one it's already greased up and everything you can actually move these arms backwards and forwards so luckily it's just these arms and the motor's all good so i can just replace this cover mixing and matching some parts we have a fully working wiper motor so now i'm just going to get the best motor that's uh, working with that i'm just going to grease everything up take it all apart put some fresh grease in it and then we begin to get this back on. <laughs> we actually have some wipers that work again. So this is the wiper mechanism apart. I understand that most people won't be interested in this, but for the people that do, um, basically you can see this is the arm that goes through here that attaches to your wipers. And on the top of here, you have like a, a washer here and then a split pin. So like these two, they hold the top of this in. And then basically you just have a little O-ring washer, which is actually in good condition. These normally split. And then once you take this all apart, you can just brake cleaner it all up and you can see why they cease together because obviously they're rust and when the uh, grease dries out of them then they just get stuck so we're going to clean all that out lube it all up so we've got nice fresh grease packed in there right so just pack this full of grease and you can see free as anything now smooth as you like so these wipers are going to work nice and free again so although that wiper motor actually did work, the one I just showed you on the car, it's still really hot and I don't really want to be using that. So I've just switched the one over from the one on that car. I'm just basically making the best out of two motors because I've noticed that this one has obviously been trimmed at some point and I don't know if you can see, but it actually moves around inside there. It's actually a load of movement in there. So I didn't want to use that whole complete wiper. So I'm just making the best out of the two. It's been a chance to clean up all this nastiness that's inside this scuttle pan, as you can see. So all the drainage holes and everything are all blocked up. And then scrape that out, blow it through with some air. Well, there we go, we've got wipers again now. You can see I took the opportunity as well to clean up this panel, back to black here, get it looking clean. I changed the wiper arms. I also changed the wipers over as well for my other car because they was nearly new. So we've got fresh wipers on there now. Everything's worked sweet. I'll just give it a show ya. And there we go, fully working wipers and a bonus to it as well. We've actually got insignia washer jets. Which give a nice spray pattern you can see on the windscreen. They give a nice mist as opposed to the Astro G ones which actually just squirt all over the place and over the roof. So it's a beautiful morning for the first drive. First test drive of the car. It didn't take us long to get it on the road. As you see the brakes are all done there. Got the new wheels on there. The car needs a proper detail. We ain't done that yet. So it needs a proper going over. Proper DA uh, polishing, compounding. You know, there's loads of uh, marks and everything in the paintwork where that you can hear how it is. So it's going to get a clay bar on that, do that in the future. But the main thing was get this engine done. So now this engine's running absolutely sweet. The car's running sweet. Um, I just popped the opal grill on the front of it, um, just for a little bit different. I was going to leave the Irmishu one on there. Stuck the opal one on there. And I like the way it goes with the uh, shark eye headlights. So I think we need a splitter on the front there. Put a splitter on the front, just lower it a little bit. It's a shame about the holes in the... Um, number plate recess so the car could do if we'd go a little bit lower on the front you can see here but i don't really want to ruin the actual drive of the car it drives really well at the minute when you do lower the fronts on these they do get really stiff going over speed humps so they're really like bang about um, one of the other things i'm going to do is going to get rid of these bonnet raisers on the back because they don't need to be on this car um, they're about 25 mil i think they are at the minute i'm um, going to get rid of them as well and you can see we've put the usual Haco wind deflectors on here so one annoying thing that the previous owner had done is they de-locked this door. So the door handle's got no lock on it. Now, if you know these cars, you can put a key in there, turn the lock, and all the windows and everything do up. The only issue is I've got door handles to put in here to replace them, but we ain't got the door lock anymore. Um, I'm gonna have a look to see if it's behind there. We'll pull that out at one point to see if it's behind there. If it is, that'd be a result. If it's not, then that's gonna be annoying because it means when the battery, well, if the battery ever goes flat on this car, you can't get into it. 